Hey guys, it's Chris, your favorite founder over at Gorilla Desk. And I've been asked for a video for you guys on all the things that are notably new in the version three of Gorilla Desk. So you guys can have one overall video to kind of share amongst yourselves and your team and understand what has really been happening that's new and different in version three that we should be paying attention to. That's the purpose of this video. And I'm really happy to take you through this myself. Um, I'm very proud of version three and the product as far as how things have come along. What you're going to note that's really new uh, right off the bat is going to be the speed of the system from classic to version three. A lot of the magic that's done behind the scenes on upgrading and overhauling our development systems and hardware systems. Uh, you guys get to feel all of that in version three. The search uh, functionality is much faster and um, just the usability of going across Gorilla Desk and using it on a daily basis, you'll notice that there's a lot more speed that we are able to gain. Also, things that are new are around our design principles. Generally, we've tried to keep version three the same as classic, so you guys don't really feel lost, but there are a few things to know, which are mainly the menu system, right? The menu system we've modified to being kind of like a catch-all menu system. But what's nice is you can actually pin primary menu functions back to the top of your Gorilla Desk for the items that you might use the most often. Okay, so a lot of you who are coming from Classic may be used to already seeing these tabs pinned at the very top, and so you could actually pin them back to the top and even customize it as you'd like. Something else that's notable from this overall menu system is that we're showing you all of the add-ons that are already on in your system, as well as the ones that are inactive so that you can jump to those quickly. But you can get to all the add-ons by just going to the all add-ons menu function and then you'll be there as well. So just highlighting this primary menu, which has changed, but then gives a lot of you a lot of flexibility. And so that's one main thing to note is the main menu has changed. You still have access to all the menu functions here on the left side menu as well. And then one other area I wanna note is the changing of the job detail menu. Your job detail menu used to run across the top in classic from left to right, but all we've done is we've dropped it here on the side. So now this allows us to highlight and already show you the items that you can add that are hidden, making it even a lot easier to train the users so that the additional items they can add on the job are not hidden. And that's the value of having the job menu on the right now. Other than those two design changes, most of everything else is gonna be very familiar from classic to version three as far as the design principles. So let's take a look further at some of the new things that have been added. So you have more calendar views now. At this time, you also have three week and four week views. So these views for your calendar views are new and we've been able to expand beyond two weeks, providing you a larger week views. There's actually now a map view in monthly. So if I jump into the month view, you'll notice now I can still have the map open. Before you didn't have a map view in monthly view. And we know that many of you guys have come to love a monthly view of your schedule. So giving you the map option now is available in version three. There are map search functions now. I can search all the customer base that already exists in Gorilla Desk, or I could search new locations in Google and plot those as new waypoints. This is giving you a very fast way to plot waypoints when you're accepting or taking new prospect phone calls, or if you have to search for a customer that's already on the phone, understand where they are among all the other jobs on your calendar. I really like the new map search views. They're very powerful. You also have now a map drawing tool. Before you could only move jobs if you dragged and dropped them on the actual calendar. But now what we've allowed you to do is you have a map drawing tool at the bottom right of the map. Once you activate it, your cursor will become a drawing selector and you can draw around a group of jobs. That group of jobs will then appear here in the dragging queue and you can drag them to another date or time on the calendar right from here. So a lot of people love this as a visual, easy way to drag and move jobs and reschedule jobs. Before you were confined to just moving them on the calendar, but now you can make those selections right on the map. 
You could even start another selection group and group multiple selections if you needed to move them both at the same time. Then you're able to clear your selections and turn off the drawing tool. Another thing that's new is editing time off events. So before we didn't allow you to also add locations or even edit or modify a time off event after it's created. But now you can also add a location and address to time off events and edit them after you've already created them, modify them after the fact. You also have the ability to add new custom events in version three. And these custom events can be any custom event type that you want assigned to one or multiple users with its own address location, its own description as well, giving more flexibility to the calendar and Gorilla Desk by allowing you to edit your time off events and add completely custom events. You can now add emojis to job tiles. So if I click on any job, I'll be able to designate that job with any type of emoji. Many people want to show, you know, if there's a balance due or Anything you really want. If you need to call ahead, you can place a phone emoji. Anything you dream up, you can really place now an indicator on a job, and that will show on that job and every time it repeats as well. It also shows on the mobile app for the technicians. There are also now a calendar bookmark bar. So if you're opening any job or viewing any job detail, or invoice or estimate or work order for that matter, that has a minimizing function at the top right, you're now able to minimize that window to come back to again in the future, giving more of a multitasking ability to Gorilla Desk. In your classic version, whenever you leave a current view, you never get to save it or come back to it later. So now if I'm looking in a specific view at a specific invoice, I'm able to minimize that view and get right back to that location again, okay? So I get back to that customer. The same thing becomes active now if you're in a text messaging conversation. So I can minimize this conversation and come back to it later. So pay uh, specific attention to any areas now where you have a minimize function. Those are minimized to your calendar hotbar so that you'll be able to get back to that task again later. One of the things that we were really always being asked for is, hey, I wanna be able to add images more easily to my invoices, estimates, and work orders, right? So if we jump over to an invoice now, we allow you from the desktop as well as the mobile app to easily drag and drop images that are gonna be visible to that client. You're able to add captions and that caption will also show and print the image with the caption on your paperwork. So when I come over here to open any job on my mobile app as well, and I go to interact with the invoice, we allow a call out selection for that technician to easily attach images that are going to be visible to a client, modify those captions, and select which Im images they want to show and make visible on the paperwork. So again, you can do this on invoices, estimates, and work orders. Another feature you guys were asking us for was a specific add-on called time windows. And so we added time windows Time windows allow you to add a time frame. So before in Gorilla Desk Classic, you could only set specific times for when you're scheduling appointments. But now time windows allow you to set actual time frames, morning or afternoon time frames, or you can edit and customize your own time frames. So then when you're creating or scheduling any job, in the scheduling parameters, you're able to set them up for a certain time window. By default, it'll be set to a time window for the actual job time, but you can decide to assign them into a morning or an afternoon window. This will then customize your outgoing communication when you're trying to confirm or schedule jobs, and it will uh, communicate to them the time window instead of the specific time. Another thing to really allow you guys to save a ton of time are no templates. And no templates are now accessible from your system settings. So if we jump into settings, you'll now find the ability to create note and to-do list templates. All of the notes in the Gorilla Desk system, you're now able to create specific templates for ahead of time so that when you go to write 
a note for invoices or estimates or job notes. You could already insert existing templates that you have that you've created for your technicians or admins. And that saves a lot of time when you're having to go and edit that note after the fact. You also have the ability to create custom to-do lists that will exist on a job. We'll create one together. We'll just pick a few random to-dos. So go ahead and use this list as my first to-do list. And we'll make a custom job note. Here you're going to put in anything that you're usually going to write a note for so that you'll have it by default. So now I'm going to go ahead and jump into a job and we'll see how these work. So right here, we're on a job and I can bring in a to-do list on this job. And we already created my first to-do list, so I'll import this one. So these to-do list items now are already here on this job. When a technician goes to it on the mobile app, he'll be able to select which ones are done. It shows with a timestamp when they completed that to-do. Then it shows you if all the to-dos are completed. I could then also set this to-do list to repeat with every single job. And then they'd have to do this with each job. So that's your to-do list. Now if I'm going to go and write a note, I can pull from my note templates. Oops, I made a mistake there. But you can tell, here's my first job note, and it imports the note details. So now, wherever you're writing notes in Gorilla Desk, you can start with an imported template. And you can manage your templates at any time that fill out and make it even faster for your technicians and admins to complete their daily job and the daily tasks. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to move on. We've just gone over note templates and to-do list checklists. I think we're about halfway there. Task features are not allowed. <laughs> sorry, task features are now a lot more accessible throughout the app. You'll see now on version three, you can add tasks right at the top of your calendar, very similar to Google Calendar. Those tasks will show on the date that they're due, right here, right in your way on the calendar. You don't have to search for them anymore in your inbox. They're now visual, so you can't miss them. You can see that we have this task that's not completed from yesterday, and so the inbox is telling us, hey, you have a task here that's still incomplete. Along with this, you're going to see a newly designed inbox where we easily show you what tasks need to be done. Your emails will also filter in here when your email inbox is connected, as well as your voice messages. So that's making tasks easier for you in the application. We also now have a fast intake form. So when I'm adding new customers, I can jump to the fast form method. And this just allows me to grab the name and address, and I don't have to deal with any of the other items. This is the regular long form method. And now we have a fast form intake method, which is new. We're going to jump over to the new triggers. So under our add-ons for triggers, there are now two new triggers. One that allow you to send work orders by email when the job status is set to complete, as well as the ability to automatically charge a card on file when the job status is set to complete. This kind of lets you automate a whole workflow. If a technician just sets a, stop, a status to complete, then it will automatically charge a card. Then you can also send it, set up to automatically send a receipt. So there's a lot more automation through the triggers that you can have everything done with that payment just by setting the job to complete. We're going to take a look now at sales commission features. These were highly requested. So not only do we give you production commission tracking, meaning you can set up a commission for every line item in Gorilla Desk, and whoever is assigned to that job and that commission type that's completed they end up getting a production commission value that shows here. We also have sold by commission. 
So for any user that is tagged that they have sold this item and you've set them up to receive a commission for that item, they'll show up in your sold by commission tracking. I think this will make more sense if we go and look at the manager. So here we're looking at how we can manage commission. We have production commission and sales-based commission. And you can set up your commission per each line item. That commission can be a percentage or a flat dollar value. And that commission could either repeat once or repeat indefinitely on that service. So now you can see how we have what you guys have been looking for, which is the division of both and the ability to have both production commission and sales commission. So not only do we uh, have those commissions now, we're allowing you to see split commission values. So on the report, sometimes some line items you don't want to pay a full out commission to and you want to split them between the two users or multiple assigned users that might be on that job. So we're also giving you a split commission value in total that you can work from as well. The next feature we're going to go over is an SMS update. So if we jump over to our add-ons under SMS messaging, you're now going to see that you have after hours messaging. So I can send an automated system SMS reply to customers communicating outside of our regular operating hours. So if they're trying to communicate to us by SMS and it's not working hours, we can have the SMS bot interact with them and send a custom reply. So we've made it to where you can have a reply go out frequently or infrequently in case you don't want to use uh, a bunch of automated SMS replies. And then you can completely customize that automated reply. You can even have them link off to um, filling out a custom quote or form, whatever you want them to do off of that SMS. So that's after hours SMS. We also have the ability on your incoming SMS to show you if leads that aren't already added to your system are trying to communicate to you by SMS. That was not added in Classic, but is now available in version 3. So when leads or prospects are trying to communicate to you and they aren't already in your GorillaDesk system, those leads are now captured and you can communicate to them by SMS. We now have a new add-on, which is for voice over IP. This is our largest feature set that we've released with the version 3. With this system, you'll be able to activate an actual phone system that integrates directly with GorillaDesk. I'm going to go ahead and log into another account so that you'll be able to see it in action. So here we go. We're inside another account. And what happens is I have the ability to have a phone system already accessible inside my GorillaDesk. So when users call in, they're already automatically showing up at the very top of GorillaDesk as an inbound call. You can even see the inbound prospects and leads that aren't added in your system, engage in a call, and add them as a lead at that time in your system. You're able to have group numbers, which will dial into a group of users, and you can have individual personal inbox numbers. You even have after hours messaging so that if people call in after hours, there's a specific voicemail uh, that ends up coming up for after hours messaging that communicates to them, basically showing that you're after hours and allowing them to leave an appropriate message. With group numbers, you have a specific voicemail greeting. You're able to forward your group number, of course. And for those states and areas that require a call recording disclosure saying that you're recording this call, you're able to activate that as well for your group number. So there is call recording available on your plans. Let's go ahead and jump back over here. You'll see with our plans that in the pro plan for VoIP, you end up having your group number, your auto attendant, an actual call activity report, and toll-free number support, as well as 30 days of call recording. This is a recommended plan. If you guys are looking for more of sales functionality, smart dialer, listening in on calls, coaching in on calls, and having unlimited call recording, then that would be on our growth VoIP plan. 
You guys get to save a ton of time by having the voice system already directly integrated in Gorilla Desk. We're really pushing for these features because we want you guys to have more efficient admins and salespeople and so they can understand and more quickly get through follow-up calls, upsells, scheduling calls, and all the types of calling that has to be done as part of this business model. So the last thing to go over before there are just a quick things to note are the open is the open API. You guys will find the ability in version three to create an API key that allows you to connect many types of other applications or platforms to Gorilla Desk. We even work closely with our partners and our clients to integrate the API with certain specific needs that you might have. You can access the current API documentation here as well to see what's uh, currently uh, publicly available to everyone. 